Hello folks, Kubernetes has become a go-to environment for running your applications. And they also store a lot of the mission critical data, obviously, in these clusters. So uh, it becomes obviously very important to have that data protected and measures in place for such applications. Now, in this video, we will go uh, through and have a look on how you can achieve this with Microsoft Azure. Today, I have the pleasure that I'm joined by Rashad a uh, senior PM in the Azure BCDR team who will tell us more about how you can protect your Azure Kubernetes service or AKS clusters. Welcome, Rashad. Great to have you on today. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, great to have you be in here and me there and helping out customers uh, to tell them how they can protect their AKS clusters today. Awesome. So, Rashad, um, customers are increasingly using uh, AKS to run their applications on Azure. Can you tell us why uh, backup is critical and how they how this can be achieved with Azure Backup today? So Azure Kubernetes service has becoming like a default platform for customers right now to running their containers. Uh, customers have usually been using AKS for running stateless, but st storing state in those clusters has become like a key thing now. Customers are running like databases like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, they're like relational new age cloud data databases everything is now being run inside kubernetes and the key thing when you're running a database is, is to store that data and back it up so in case uh, you can have any kind of a failure deletion something like that or any mishap happens you have your backup to protect you so backup basically backs you up uh, and that's why the key thing comes in for AKS also is to have a data protection uh, product uh, in line and taking that approach, uh, we in Azure Backup, we built our uh, AKS Backup solution. Uh, the focus that we built onto is around app centricity. That's the key in Kubernetes. That's what we focus on. Customers get like a set of filtering capabilities, which allows them to identify what they want to back it up in their AKS clusters, like namespaces, labels, and all from coming from the Kubernetes world, they can do it. And then they can easily uh, back up not just uh, the data that's stored, but the other application state that's there, we call it cluster state in Kubernetes world, and that they can also protect. So all in all, customer can encompass, define what their application is and back it up on a regular basis. And then with Azure Backup being there, they get all the additional facilities that's going to come along with it, uh, maybe long-term retention, uh, monitoring and uh, governance capabilities that they need. And then they can also get ransomware protection online. So all these features are in place uh, that customers need uh, in backup solutions for AKS also. That's awesome. Uh, and that's awesome to hear, especially what AKS Backup now can do for our customers. Um, so you talked about application-centric approach, right? And I think we do that a lot, especially now these days uh, when it comes to Azure and the cloud. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so fundamentally, when we talk about app centricity in Kubernetes world, uh, that's the basic tenant on which Kubernetes was built uh, to basically keeping aside the application deployment and development process uh, separate from infrastructure as in case. And that's how Kubernetes has been built. And that's what the key part of backup is. You're not looking to protect the infra on which you have uh, running your application. You're trying to protect the app in itself. And that's what we talk about app centricity in Kubernetes. And I'm going to quickly just uh, do a demo for you, how you can configure backup and highlight to you how the app centric approach uh, comes into picture for uh, AKS backup. So this is here, I have a generic uh, AKS cluster running. It has a WordPress app deployed in it. So I'm just going to show it to you quickly where the app is as in case. So app is uh, deployed uh, with the namespaces in the AKS world. And uh, that's where it's uh, it's a logical boundary as in case for AKS. So it's a WordPress app that have you, have, you can see there's a MySQL database running in it and a WordPress application also running within this cluster. And that is what I'm going to look to protect. So first thing that we have done in context of experience wise in itself, you get your backup inbuilt within the AKS portal. That means the experience that is there for Kubernetes in Azure, just get it there so you can manage your backups directly from here and you can see the entire experience basically lies in the same platform. Now, uh, with this uh, coming up, uh, I'll show it to you how you can do a backup, uh, how it works and what the app centric approach when I talked about will uh, come in picture. So first I'll select a vault. Vault is the key component in in uh, Azure Backup world. That's the management layer uh, for us in context of uh, backup. So that's here. I'll move forward. Uh, 
and then I'll do something in the next step that is called creating a policy. What is a backup policy? It's something in which you define the schedule and retention of your backup. Uh, in the backup world, it becomes key uh, to have uh, a, specific, a specific RPO and RTO when trying to back it up. So you can do it uh, in here. So I'll just quickly create a backup policy here and I'll define the schedule and retention uh, under this policy. You can see I can schedule backups for hourly basis. Every four hours, I can backup my AKS cluster. I can do a backup daily basis. And then I can retain each backup for from seven days to an year as per my requirement. So that is available within AKS backup. Now, this uh, quickly, this policy, once it's created, then I can move forward and basically configure uh, the actual application and define uh, what it would look like. So this is where I came from. And now I'll define the application. So first I'll name the app name. Let me name it WordPress. And because I'm backing it up, let me use it. As I talked about uh, the namespace being the logical boundary in Kubernetes world, you have an option to pick up which particular thing that you want to back it up. In here, I want to back up my WordPress app, so I'm just going to pick it up. What else do I have in here? You have labels. Labels are basically tags that you provide within your application components in Kubernetes. You can use them. What it allows is that you can pick and choose specific resources uh, within your cluster include secrets and all uh, you can also add app customization by writing some pre-post hooks uh, hooks are basically certain commands that you need to run as part of your backup and then you can have application consistent backups these are very crucial in the databases world like mysql mongodb that's where they come in uh, handy and that's what is also available so that's how you have defined my app boundary as a case i picked up a namespace i can use labels i can pick and choose some uh, particular resources and all I can do that. And after that, I need to select a snapshot resource group. This is where the backups get stored. I can run the validation and my backup will proceed uh, for this uh, particular scenario. So that's how you can define an app a boundary within uh, AKS backup and basically backup your application. Uh, as in case, uh, I have already created a backup or configured one for this cluster, which you can see it here. It's an entire cluster backup. In a case backup, you get an option to back up your entire cluster. And even any changes comes into future will automatically get backed up. So you don't need to worry about it. So that's also comes in. You have a recovery point already in place. So this is how uh, backup can be configured for an AKS cluster. And the app centric approach uh, that I defined right now comes into flow. Thanks. Awesome. Like that, like making the life of application admins that much easier. Uh, that's obviously the goal. Um, so um, obviously uh, we discussed a bit like, okay, where you have these uh, stateless and stateful apps. And so there's different scenarios. Um, can you tell me in which scenarios backup really can help customers? Like what are the scenarios where backups will come in handy? Yeah. So backups are a crucial thing in a stateful scenario that means when i say stateful a data is being stored inside the aks cluster it becomes very important that you have uh, backups in place and how backups help at that point of a time what if uh, you basically drop the table in the database that you're running and then how you want to bring that data up if it's in production environment there's no way to get it so at that point of a time aks backup comes in handy you have your uh, data backed up you can just restore it and then you can have your tables backed up uh, to a particular time uh, in the past where the table existed you can do that simply for that then new scenarios coming up where backup becomes handy is something like application migration so i want to in upgrade my kubernetes cluster Kubernetes every six to 12 months brings out a new version. It can also upgrade with that. So if as a customer, I want to upgrade my cluster to move to a newer version of Kubernetes, I can use backup then. Uh, one of the big scenarios that's around is around application migration. I want to move my application from one cluster to another cluster. There's another key scenario that comes in is, uh, what if I have a bug in production? I want to fix it, but what I need to do is that I need to clone my production environment, move into a test environment, test out the bug and then redeploy it. In every single place that you have the scenarios that have when that's where backup comes in handy because then you can use backup not just as a backup for your deleted data, but uh, for newer scenarios like migrating your application from one class to another, DevOps related uh, experiences that you have or you want to do an app upgrade or cluster upgrade. So everything comes in handy. So it's not just about one, but multiple use cases comes in with backup. 
in terms of ex experience part of it, even the restore experience that we have built in Thomas is app centric uh, for AKS backup. So as I showed you, this is the backup that I have right now. And then what I'll do is that I'll just quickly do a restore experience also. This is the recovery point or basically a backup that I had taken earlier for this cluster. And what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to restore it. So I'll start the restore flow. So I can simply select multiple restore points. Right now there's just one. So I'm just showing it that. I can have options of multiple restore points available. I can select the Kubernetes cluster that I want to use. So let me I want to use. Okay, here's my cluster. And then uh, what I'm going to show is the app centric approach within the restore flow also. So similar to you have seen that backup configuration, same thing comes in restore also. That's the cool part of the solution. You can pick and choose what namespace that you want to restore. You don't need to just restore all of them. I can decide that, okay, I just want to restore my WordPress app. I can do that. Or maybe another component out of it, I can do that. Even within those namespaces, you still have much uh, deeper options to filter out and uh, restore. So you have labels, API groups. These are more Kubernetes components that are there. You can use them to define what particular items within your backup that you want to restore. I talked about the application migration scenario. That's where namespace mapping kind of thing comes in. Namespace as a logical boundary for an application. Maybe I want to move uh, my application components from one boundary to another boundary. So what I can do is that I can create an altogether new namespace and restore the resources there and just have migrate my app from one environment to another altogether simply uh, by just this thing. There's some little conflict handling while restoring uh, these uh, resources, how can manage if similar resources comes in appearance. So, so that also gets managed. You are going to also option to customize a restore. You can put up uh, a simple uh, Kubernetes uh, CR inside the cluster and then the CR will be picked up by the backup service and then your backups also will be done. So you can have customizations also while you're performing a restore. And with this, you get your app centric approach around for AKS backup. Uh, the good thing is that that with, a, uh, with AKS backup being an Azure backup, you get the entire set of experience uh, of restore also. So you can keep track of your restore jobs and all how they're performing, when they're performing. So you have that option available in that case. So this is how the restore works and how you can use the restore functionality for different, different user scenarios that has comes along, which I mentioned earlier. Oh, this is fantastic. I, I love the namespace mapping that especially, especially not just like if you want to restore, obviously, uh, but also if you do some migration or testing or you want to do different things with the real mm -hmm. data, right? Uh, super excited about this. And I'm sure like a lot of our viewers are also very excited about this. So where can they learn more? So you can just go to aka.ms AKS cluster backup. You'll reach to our Microsoft Learn portal where you can go through the documentation. We have, we have given you an entire set of scenarios, how you can use the product in a detailed manner, and you can use the tutorials, quick, uh, quick learning sections, and use them to start putting your clusters from today itself. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rashad, for all this great information today and walking us through uh, these new exciting solutions for AKS. That will help uh, a lot um, our customers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Davos.